Uh, let's address some of the burning questions surrounding these popular medications. We'll come friends from mind-blowing journey into the world of ED medication. We are diving deep into the realm of sildenafil, vardenafil, arvanafil, and tadalafil, the ultimate lies against ED. Buckle up, because we are about to answer those burning questions and make you an ED expert in no time. And we're going to answer uh, nine questions that I have a bonus at the end of the video. Stick around, you don't want to miss it. Question what, what exactly is ED? ED is an ability to achieve or maintain penile erection sufficiently for sexual activity. But having erection trouble from time to time is necessarily a cause for concern. I won't sweat over it. If ED persists, is an ongoing issue, that is trouble. And in fact, is impotence. Question number two, how common is it? It's a common disorder that affects 30 million men in the United States alone, about 100 million worldwide. It increases with age. It affects predominantly men over 40. And there is the 40 over 40 rule. Overall, there's 40% of men over age 40 have some form of erectile dysfunction. Question number three, have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes when an erection takes center stage? And essentially, the first component of an erection is arousal. You see something, you smell something, you hear something, you touch something, and that gets you aroused. And this process causes the body to release a substance called nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide would lead to a further chemical reactions in the body would lead to a release of another compound called the cyclogonazine monophosphate, leads to relaxation of arteries in the penis and allow blood flow to increase and leading to contraction of the veins to trap the blood in the penis and causing an erection. All the D medications all increase this compound, blocking an enzyme phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor that breaks down this compound. Question number four, what are the causes of erectile dysfunction? We could divide them in three groups, organic causes, psychogenic and miscellaneous. Organic causes, high blood pressure, over time damage the endothelium, the inner artery, the inner layer of the arteries uh, and accelerates atherosclerosis. In addition, a, in a certain blood pressure medications like thiazides, the bad blockers, can affect your sexual function as well. And diabetes, a risk factor for coronary artery disease and erectile dysfunction as well. And smoking increases the risk of vascular damage. Alcohol, in addition to causing other issues of heart disease or liver disease, can also impair erection. High cholesterol and obesity worsens hypertension and diabetes. And obviously, if you had prostate surgery or spinal cord injuries, could lead to organic erectile dysfunction. But 10 to 25% of men that have erectile dysfunction, they don't have an organic cause. And in fact, if you have morning erection, most likely your cause is psychogenic. And you have multifactorial. Sometimes it's not just one villain, but a league of foes teaming up for trouble. Question number five, is ED the canary in the cold mine? ED can be an early warning sign of heart disease and diabetes in men with no obvious cause. Should be screened for heart disease before starting treatment because coronary disease and diabetes are caused by endothelial dysfunction, causing inadequate blood flow to the heart and to the penis. In addition, both share the same risk factors, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the high blood sugar, the diabetes, the smoking, the alcohol, the obesity. And atherosclerosis hits the penis first because the penile artery is half the size of the widow maker coronary artery, the main artery in front of your heart called the left anterior descending. And common to all ED medications, they all work through the same mechanism. And they do not cause a direct erection. They not automatically produce an erection. They are not aphrodisiacs. What they do is to amplify the signal. They affect the response to sexual stimulation. All ED meds that we're talking today block the same enzyme, leading to increase in the compound we talked about, the cyclic gonosine monophosphate. All act the same way. Question number six, what about the all so elusive side effects? Are they friend or foe? All of them. The sildenafil, the vardenafil, the tadalafil, all causes headaches, could cause facial flushing, dizziness, dyspepsia, stomach abscess, nasal congestion, and rhinitis. And Viagra could cause more color changes, blurred vision, and increase sensitivity to light. And Cialis tadalafil could cause limb pain as well. Question number seven, what about contraindication? It's a fancy name uh, for conditions or meds that uh, might clash with this medication. We have two main categories, nitrates, nitroglycerin, any form, it doesn't matter. 
if you place it under your tongue, you place in your skin as a patch, or if you take oral medications for of nitroglycerin, like Endure, Monoket, or others, they do not go together with the AD medications because they could lower your blood pressure to dangerous levels, leading to a vicious cycle ending in death. There's not a group of medications called alpha blockers that are used to treat high blood pressure and also used to treat BPH benign prostatic hypertrophy. These are prazosine, mini prazosine, hytrine, doxazosine, cardura. If combined with the medications, they could all lead to severe low blood pressure, hypertension. Question number eight, are the meds safe? Have you ever questioned the safety of these little magic pills? Fear not, my friend. It was a prospective study published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine this year, in 2023. They look at 23,000 men well, on ED medications compared to 48,000 uh, controls. And they look at MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events. We're talking about cardiovascular death, heart attacks, need for coronary vascularization, stents or bypass, and heart failure, unstable engine, cardiovascular death. They all lower all these components of the major adverse cardiovascular events. And in fact, they had a 25% lower total mortality. Question number nine, you're probably wondering how these medications differ. We already mentioned they act the same way. Sildenafil Viagra is the blue pill. It was originally tested to treat extra cardiovascular disease, angina, and high blood pressure. It was meant to dilate. We knew that dilated coronary arteries are blocking the enzyme we mentioned above the PDA5, phosphodiesterase inhibitor 5. The research nurses noticed that when checking men in the study, men were lying in their bellies, they were embarrassed, they were having an erection. And with that observation, the blue pill was born. The Viagra was approved by the FDA in 1998, and in 2005 was actually approved also with a different name to treat pulmonary hypertension. The answer is about 0.8 hours and it lasts four to six hours. And the dose varies between 25 to 100 grams a day. What about Levitra or Denafil? This was approved by the FDA in 2003, and it's pretty similar pharmacologically to the blue pill. The time the maximum concentration is about 0.7 hours, and half-life is about four hours, it would last again four hours or a bit longer. The dose varies between 10 to 20 milligrams a day. An important fact is both the blue pill, sildenafil, the verdenafil, the levitra, they need to be taken in an empty stomach, otherwise will delay absorption and may not work. A vandafil, standard. The newest kid on the block was approved in 2012, and the main difference is claim to fame is that it's fast acting. It could act within 15 minutes once you take it. Everything else is pretty much the same. Vanifil is not generic in the US at this point. Tadalafil, Cialis, the weekend pill. This was also approved by the FDA in 2003, and it's very different from the other ones because it requires two hours to reach maximum concentration in the blood, but the half-life is 17 and a half hours, meaning it could, the effects could last up to 36 hours. It's the only one that can be taken on a daily basis as opposed to the other ones taking on as needed basis. And it's also used to treat primary pulmonary hypertension and also used to treat the benign prostatic uh, hypertrophy of people who have difficulty in urinating or have to get up many times during the night to urinate. Number 10, oh, did someone say bonus question? Now the moment you all have been waiting for, the ultimate showdown. Which one of these medications is best for you? Which one is superstar tailored to your need? It really depends in your situation. If you have any other conditions, if you have a BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy, obviously Cialis will be much better for you because you're killing two birds with one stone. But your preferences and the price, the side effects, all have to be taken into consideration. And some may not agree with you, others may be just fine. You may have to try more than one and see what agrees more with you. It is a common condition affecting 30 million Americans. And may feel embarrassed talking about it, but it's crucial to discuss with your doctor because number one, easily treated and improving quality of life in your partner. In addition, could be the first sign or something else that's wrong with you, diabetes or coronary artery disease. It could be the canary in the cold mine. And remember, your health is the most precious asset. Take control. See you next video.